So for the pop vision tools, um, there are two components. One is called pop vision graph analyzer and the other is uh, pop vision system analyzer. Um, the graph analyzer deals with um, the on device portion of the execution and the system analyzer deals with the CPU portion. So you can think of uh, IPU versus CPU parts. Uh, the documentation for the two tools is uh, located on the developer page and uh, you can download the tools using uh, this um, tile here on the same page. No login required. Uh, the place where it stands in the overall software stack, at least on this slide, is, is here. So it's um, meant to support the other components of the software stack and help engineers optimize the models for uh, memory and performance. Um, and yeah, some some quotes from the users that were happy about the tools. Uh, I've mentioned it can be downloaded at, uh, with no login required. And on the developer page, of course, there are also videos to help you get started with that. If uh, you forget something, um, Marianne recorded a about 15 minute video discussing the tools, uh, graph analyzer and system analyzer is also very simple. Um, in order to produce a profile of your graph and be able to analyze it with a graph analyzer, you can use uh, environmental options, a variable called popular engine options as shown here and it will ingest a dictionary of uh, a set of values that are described in the documentation. This is a typical use case shown here. So I would uh, set the auto report all to true. The directory for the report will be uh, report in the current directory. Um, allow out of memory will uh, if enabled, it will produce the memory profiles. It will not be able to produce the execution traces, but at least with the memory profiles, you will be able to see maybe which program steps uh, go out of memory, which variables uh, take a lot of space and maybe optimize those. Um, and you can also include flop estimates for specific steps so that um, you can see the, say, um, flop efficiency or flop utilization for different steps. And then you execute the Python program. For example, here I am just using the PyTorch basics and it produces what it, it executes the program normally, but it, it produces the profiling result in the directory called uh, report as shown here. Um, when And you can open this report by either downloading it, so um, SCP or rsync kind of operation, using that to pull those to your local machine, uh, but also pop vision tools support opening profiles on remote machines using SSH uh, connection. For the Argon system, uh, we are working to enable this uh, remote access to the profiles. I hope it will be available reason reasonably soon uh, because it adds a lot to the user experience there. Uh, when opening a profile, um, you will see that the main window contains several tabs here on the left. The main ones, uh, the more the most important ones would be memory report, liveness report, and maybe 
execution trace. So memory report um, is uh, a chart that has four numbers on the X axis um, and we call cores tiles as well. So it's uh, a core and the memory SRAM associated with that core. Um, and the memory used will be on the Y axis with gaps and without gaps. Gaps come from the fact that some of the operations want to use different memory banks and with um, that they we can gain better speed ups but uh, there can be some overhead in, in fragmentation of the memory uh, and in this case you can see that the tensors the tensor slices are distributed reasonably evenly across the um tiles the cores on the chip uh, and this even distribution across the cores is what we want so in this case pop lists have done a reasonable job distributing the variables and if i go and click on the lineless report i will see how the memory usage is uh, changing from one program step to another um, with uh, maybe some spikes for memory more memory hungry operations like um, this will be a convolution um, that uh, takes 4.6 megabytes in this case in, um, in in terms of the memory which is not always live and you can also add always live uh, memory to be shown here as well and going to the execution trace oh uh, here I should mention that um, in some cases you will see that a program maybe one or several program steps uh, will be running out of memory uh, you can make the tool visualize the upper bound for the memory 900 megabytes of SRAM on a single IPU so if you see that some specific steps um, break this uh, barrier and go out of make your program go out of memory you can then click on those specific program steps and see which variables cause or take a lot of um, memory for that operation and if you can optimize that i should also also mention that program steps are basically your compute sets in the popular program so this uh, specific program the uh, tutorials basics program is composed on, of a small number 500 something program steps as you can see and these are all uh, compute sets produced by popular libraries and chained together in a program and you can do that manually if you are creating program um, compute sets uh, using your C++ graph builder. Uh, I clicked on the execution trace and uh, you would see typically something like this in the execution trace um, with um, the flame chart here in the middle with some operation names and hierarchy of those shown here and if I think we lost the connection with Alex. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if it was just me. Okay. Uh, he'll, he'll rejoin. Yeah, maybe we can give him a couple of minutes. Yeah. 
Okay, it looks like I was oh, disconnected. That, that's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on. No worries at all. So saying that, again, the cycles of computation are uh, going um, on the horizontal axis and the tiles going on the vertical axis. And um, the tutorials that we've used yesterday, some of them go um, through the steps to create the profile and then um, show some of the um, profile examples. For, for instance, PyTorch pipelining will show an example of a profile created across four IPUs showing how the computation is uh, distributed across four IPUs for the pipeline case, which is uh, quite an interesting thing to see. And um, there are other tutorials covering system analyzer and in feed out feed for TensorFlow, which are specific operations that we use under the hood to enable faster data transfers for TensorFlow. Um, this is um, and one of the examples when we use the capability, the feature of the Pop uh, Vision Graph Analyzer, comparing several reports together. Uh, in this case, I've opened uh, two of those reports. Uh, one is shown at the top here and one shown at the bottom. And we can see that um, the execute, the program steps, the, the memory they take changes slightly between the executions uh, and the usage of memory um, between the kinds of um, very kinds of um, consumers of memory also changed between the two profiles. And similarly, I can compare the memory uh, report on the uh, per tile basis, which can be helpful if you're trying to optimize for memory usage and you you make an incremental a set of incremental changes to your graph and you see how those changes affect your memory usage, for example. Uh, on this slide, I'm showing the pipelining example with the trace the execution trace um, split across four IPUs with um, the computation going from IPU 0 to IPU 1. You can see that um, batch number 0 will be processed on IPU 0 first, and then IPU 1, IPU 2, IPU 3. And at, at some point, um, you will see the, the backwards pass going from IPU 4 to IPU 0, and so on. And then the um, gradient uh, accumulation and then gradient steps will be applied across the four IPUs. Um, if I try and show what it looks like in real life, this is the same uh, pipelining uh, report that I've uh, loaded. The memory report now covers more than one IPU. I'm showing the tiles here. Um, if you remember, one IPU has um, 1,472 cores or tiles. We are running across four IPUs, so all of those are represented as a uh, contiguous addressing space here and the memory distribution across all four is shown here. And I'm visualizing also the maximum memory per tile being 624, 624 KB The liveness report um, shows that, well, there are no significant peaks and we are far away from the max memory in this case. Uh, sorry, this is not the max memory. This is the uh, memory. Yes, this is the max memory across four IPUs. 
um, and uh, in the execution trace, um, I can click on an operation here and I should be able to go into the details of this operation while the summary, um, so the details show the cycles and um, the split of those between the different um, BSP steps as shown here. And the summary shows the percentages of um, the cycles each of the tiles on the four IPUs spent, uh, spends doing these different operations on tile execute, exchanges, and other things. And ideally, we want it to uh, be all read as much as possible. But in this case, um, the batch size is not huge, and there are overheads um, because it's um, a pipeline execution. So on IPU3, we are seeing a lot of uh, external synchronization weights um, in the tiles. This is another example of um, the Schnepp model. It's profile, it can be quite uh, involved. And the nice thing that there is about the profiling tool is I can easily zoom in and out and um, bring specific details of interest uh, into the attention here and then um, dive um, um, deeper into specific operations maybe. And then a couple of minutes on the system analyzer. Um, it instruments or allows you to instrument the threads running on the CPU um, so that you can see whether some uh, maybe data pre-processing operations take too much time and starve your devices of data. So you can think of optimizing those maybe by launching more threads, more parallel workers in the PyTorch data loader, or by um, doing data pre-processing asynchronously. Um, so that uh, feature can be augmented with uh, quite a few others. For example, this screenshot shows in, in a single picture heat maps of um, specific tensors that uh, we chose to track weights of uh, conv layers in this case, as uh, though the distributions of those weights progress from one epoch to another. And um, markings for epoch be beginnings and duration, so begin and end of specific phases uh, during the execution that you can uh, do with the uh, weave construct in uh, Python. And it's uh, it all detail is detailed in the tutorials that we have that um, I linked to on the previous slide. So the pop vision tools can be extremely useful and handy when you are debugging the performance of your models on the IPUs, uh, including the CPU part of the system. So I would encourage you to um, look into the profiles and uh, play around with the different features and um, ways to visualize the data in these tools.